Burr. If you're always the cold one, the tired one, the one with brain fog, then that can absolutely indicate a thyroid problem. And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sarah Bennett, a licensed naturopathic physician and co-founder of Natural Med Doc. Today we're gonna to be talking about the thyroid and commonly seen dysfunctions. If you're watching from YouTube and you wanna jump ahead, I have listed all of the content out with timestamps, so go ahead and do that. Also, if you're interested in uh, a little more detail on this topic, I have a very detailed blog article on my website, so go to naturalmeddoc forward slash blog. So first off, what is the thyroid and what does it do? The thyroid is located right at the base of your neck. It is a butterfly-shaped endocrine gland that helps you to regulate your metabolism and calcium levels. So let's start with the basics. What you need to know about thyroid hormone production and regulation of this production. So first, it all starts in the brain with the hypothalamus. It releases thyroid-releasing hormone. That travels through the blood to the pituitary gland, also in the brain, to stimulate the production of thyroid stimulating hormone. This will travel through the blood to the thyroid gland to do exactly what the name says, stimulate the production of thyroid hormones. This is T4 and T3. Basically, these hormones are released in an 80-20 ratio, making T4 the most abundantly produce thyroid hormone in your in your circulation but the thing is is that t3 is actually the, the active hormone so what happens is these hormones are released into your bloodstream and travel to every tissue in the body and once they're at the location um, of activation the t4 will then convert to t3 to regulate the metabolism in that area. So if you take a look at this chart, it's a visual representation of what I just said, and it will probably make things quite a bit more clear. But one of the things that we haven't yet talked about is how your body will regulate this production. How does it shut this production off? So when you, these hormones, your T3 and your T4, reach a certain point that satisfies your brain's set point, your hypothalamus will stop producing uh, thyroid releasing hormone and what this does is it shuts down everything downstream so it'll shut off the thyroid stimulating hormone which then shuts down the production of these thyroid hormones T3 and T4. This brings us to the different types of thyroid dysfunction so what I see most commonly is under functioning of the thyroid called hypothyroidism. This is where your body is running on insufficient levels of T3 and T4. You'll see with this how it will present is with fatigue, weight gain, constipation, hair loss, and brain fog. So let's talk about two of the primary causes of hypothyroidism. I often see that there's this age-related dysfunction component. So basically what that means is that as we age, generally I see about after the age of 30, unfortunately, our thyroids just slowly taper down in the production of these hormones. And what that does is it starts to decrease our metabolic rate, putting us into a state of hibernation. So the second primary cause of hypothyroidism that I'd like to talk to you about is uh, an autoimmune condition. This is called Hashimoto's, and what you need to know is that about 90% of adult hypothyroidism has an autoimmune cause, Hashimoto's. And what this does is basically you have antibodies, uh, which are a part of your immune system, that t attack the thyroid gland. Over time, this attack of the thyroid gland decreases your your healthy thyroid tissue and decreases the ability to produce a sufficient amount of thyroid hormone, ultimately leading to low levels and a lot of symptoms. So just like you can have underfunctioning of the thyroid, you can have excess thyroid production called hyperthyroidism. If you were to have this, you would present with symptoms such as high anxiety, insomnia, weight loss, a wired, tired feeling, and even irritability and diarrhea. Let's talk about the two primary causes of hyperthyroidism. First, we've got subacute thyroiditis. Oftentimes, this is caused by something like a viral infection. 
this viral infection then stimulates the inflammation of the thyroid gland or thyroiditis. While the gland is inflamed, it will start to overproduce thyroid hormones, causing all of the symptoms that we listed above. Until this inflammation um, resolves and heals, then your levels will be elevated and you will present with hyperthyroidism, but oftentimes these do clear up. And so the second primary cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. And just like Hashimoto's, this is an autoimmune condition that stimulates overproduction of, of thyroid hormones. And so this disease actually affects about one in 200 people. And if we're looking at the presentation of this disease, you're not only going to have hyperthyroid symptoms, but also likely an enlarged thyroid, and we'll see um, PSH receptor antibodies. Those antibodies are what stimulate the thyroid to overproduce the thyroid hormones. So what is the optimal assessment for thyroid function? Well, first we have TSH. This is thyroid stimulating hormone. It's first off the most commonly used test to assess thyroid function and oftentimes the only one. TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone is basically the signal from the brain to the glands. So next we have your thyroid hormone values and usually these are tested as free T3 and free T4. The reason we test the free values is because you also have a lot of your hormone that is bound to proteins. Um, and some practitioners will test the total T3 or T4. Uh, the thing about this is that that includes the free and the bound hormone, whereas when we test the free, we're only testing what's metabolically active. So we're really testing what your body can feel and use. So this value I find to be way more accurate as far as managing your symptoms. TSH, free T3, and free T4 are really the most basic values that you are likely going to get every time you test your thyroid function. But then there's a few values that you'll probably test from time to time just to make sure that they're not out of range. Uh, and the first of these values is reverse T3. So how this fits into the picture is, um, and we talked about the conversion from T4 to T3 a little earlier. Basically, in a healthy environment, your T4 will convert to T3, your active hormone. Well, if you're under stress, whether that's mental, emotional, physical, you know, an illness, something along those lines, your T4 will start to convert to something called reverse T3. This is very similar to the T3 molecule. They both try to bind the same receptors. Meaning, if this value is elevated, then it's going to bind the receptors instead of your active T3. This reverse T3 is more inactive. It's going to start putting you into a hibernation state and causing hypothyroid symptoms, even if you're not over overtly deficient or hypothyroid. So it's very important to manage this number, which is very easily done with certain therapeutic uh, changes. And so some of the other values that might be tested would be different types of thyroid antibodies. As mentioned above, 90% of adult hypothyroidism is caused by an autoimmune condition. So this is a very important thing for us to test and for us to manage. I'm not gonna get into all the different types of antibodies that might be tested or affect the thyroid, but what you need to know is that it's important to manage the number here because if they're elevated, that means that that these antibodies are attacking your thyroid gland. They're attacking your thyroid gland, and as that happens, they're decreasing the amount of functional tissue, which means that it's a permanent damage. So I take it very seriously. I make sure that my patient's numbers are low, and we try to put this, this disease process into remission. Also, as we do that, I find that their symptom, symptom picture starts to go away. So if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment. Feel free to ask me any questions you've got on this topic. Also, if you're interested in reading a little bit more on this, I have a very detailed blog article on my website, naturalmed.com 
forward slash blog. So go there to read more. In addition, feel free to call and book a 15 minute free phone consultation. You can find our phone number on the website. Have a wonderful day and remember, live your best life.